We're Eric King coming to you once again from Nugget of Truth. We're looking at today part four of our Kingdom Discourse. Part four of our Kingdom Discourse. We're going to be looking at a little bit of, of some of the historical um, implications of the early church and, and how they affected theology today regarding the very message of the Kingdom of God which we're talking about in these studies. Now, <clears throat> let me start out with a couple scriptures and then we're going to work from there. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. And you have caused them to become God's kingdom and his priests, and they will reign on earth. Now, contextually, here we're talking about that how the Lamb of God is preparing kings and priests to rule, and they will reign on earth. Again, that's uh, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10. So there's a literal documentation from Scripture that, that, that there is going to come a time, according to that scripture, where, where God has prepared his church of kings and priests to reign on earth. Now, this is further uh, um, alluded to in Revelation chapter 20, verse 2, he, uh, where, where God seizes the dragon, which is Satan the devil, and he binds, uh, binds him for 1,000 years. He binds the devil for 1,000 years. And then down in um, uh, verse 4 of Revelation 20, And I saw the souls of those who had not worshipped the beast or his statue, nor accepted his mark on their forehead or their hands, and they came to life again, and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Key word there, the key phrase, they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Verse 5, last part, Revelation 20, uh, verse 5, last part, But they will be priests of God and of Christ, and will reign with him a thousand years. So, what we're talking about here is the doctrine of the millennial reign of Christ on earth. Now, the word millennium is not found in the Bible. It's the Latin word. I think it's probably used in the Latin Vulgate, but it's not the, the original word in the Koine Greek. But nonetheless, it just means a period of a thousand years. So, when we talk about the doctrine of the millennium, or the millennial rule of Christ, we're talking about that period where Christ will set up his kingdom and uh, it will be here on earth, according to the Bible. If we take the, the Bible in those passages literally, that's what that means. Now, there are three basic um, schools of interpretation regarding the millennium. There's the premillennial view, the postmillennial view, and the all-millennial view. Now, so they all, they all gather at Revelation 20, all these theologies, and then they part their ways at Revelation 20, because they don't, they don't see... Revelation 20 the same way. They don't understand it the same way. Now, we taught in our patristic studies, patristic study 1 and 2, that's the early church fathers, starting with the last apostle, John the Apostle, who wrote and completed the book of Revelation and then trained students. You have Polycarp, Papias, and Arius in their historical records. They taught what is called a pre-millennial viewpoint. So the earliest church, brothers and sisters, taught a pre-millennial, meaning pre, that Christ will come back before the millennial kingdom starts and he will set up his millennial kingdom on a literal earth. And we have quoted earlier quotes from Papias, Arius, and Polycarp, and even St. Augustine, who allude to that, who talk directly about that in, in, their, in the writings of the early church. So what happened? Why was there a breakaway from premillennialism? What caused all millennialism to start? What caused postmillennialism to start? Now we have to say that all millennialism and postmillennialism are new relative to the early teachings of the original church. We here at Nugget of Truth hold, of course, to the original teachings of the church, so we hold to the premillennial view of, of it of that doctrine. Now, Augustine was the bishop of Hippo, and basically he lived in a port, he lived in a in a in a realm, he lived in Africa, and um, in during his time towards the end of his life, he saw that um, that the sack of Rome by Alaric in 410 A.D. was causing Rome to become weak, and and Augustine thought, well, Christ needs to come back and set up that kingdom, and he got discouraged because Christ really wasn't doing what he anticipated Christ was going to do, so. Augustine, basically, there he was in North Africa, and he was the bishop of the Roman Church, and so what he did was is he began to write a work, and that work was called The City of God. And in this work, The City of God, he proposes the, the idea that the millennial reign, reign of Christ is merely an allegory. So he starts to interpret the, the millennial reign as a story. He spiritualizes it away. And this was the beginning in his, in his famous work, The City of God. He advanced the doctrine that the city or commonwealth of the world was doomed to perish, but the city of God, the church, 
was continuing to take the place of all the other kingdoms on this globe. So there is the first sliver of what became known as replacement theology. It's a Roman Catholic doctrine taught by the forefather Augustine. Now, again, all millennialism, the word aw is a Greek word, which means no. Connect that word to the Latin word millennialism. All millennialism means no millennium. So the millennium is just allegorized. Some believe that, teach that the millennial period started at the resurrection of Christ and are in that millennial period all the way up to the second coming of Christ. Now that's more of a post-millennial view, which we're going to get into here in just a second. But all millennialism teaches basically that there is no real millennialism unless you want to say that we're in it now and that, that the world will just get better and better and better and then Christ will come and set us up as a kingdom. Now, we can say that Augustine actually held to more of a post-millennial view because a post-millennial view is much more aggressive in its thinking. Post-millennialism, true post-millennial view, means that Christ comes back after the millennium and that it may be a literal millennium of peace which is ushered in not by the second coming of Christ to rapture his, not by the rapture of the church, I should say, but that millennium is set up by the church itself. The church itself becomes uh, aggressive and even political in establishing that kingdom on earth. As a matter of fact, this doctrine of Augustine became the basis for the temporal claims of the Roman church, the temporal claims of the Roman church. What does that mean? Well, when I, if you go back to our study, The Rise of the Roman Church, which I gave here at Nugget of Truth, I, I come to a point in that study where I talk about where, they, where the Roman Church really came into it, its power as the Roman Church as we know it today in, in around 1290 uh, A.D. Why? Because Boniface VIII, brothers and sisters, who was a pope at that time, claimed that the Church, in his argument with France and other people, he claimed that the Church had the power over all temporal things. Now listen to this claim. It's never been refuted by the Roman Catholic Church. No pope has refuted this claim by Boniface VIII. So that's why I claim, as I did in our study on the rise of the Roman Church, that that's when the Catholic Church really came into its Catholic or universal authority by making that claim and holding to that claim that the Pope, the Vicar of Christ on earth, supposedly, has all temporal authority. That means he has all authority over the material world, brothers and sisters. He can call the shots because he's supposedly in direct communication with God, he can call the shots over all material aspects of this planet. Now, of course, when he does that, he speaks what they call ex cathedra. He speaks perfection. That's what the Roman, Catholic, the Roman Catholics believe. The Pope has that authority. So Augustine, uh, by claiming early, before Boniface VIII, of temporal claims, that the Church had temporal claims, and if the kingdom was to grow irresistibly until it dominated the earth, and if the visible church took the place of literal Israel, then the visible church could rightly assume political power and could make its conquests by force. And don't underestimate this doctrine, this early doctrine of replacement theology, and the dangers of the doctrine of replacement theology, brothers and sisters. Because the I believe as other Bible students know and believe and teach, that Rome plays a key role in the setting up of the ten confederated kingdom under Antichrist. And they are going to use this claim, this temporal authority claim, to rule the entire planet. And they're going to claim that their false church has the authority, that their false religion has the authority to in fact encompass and fill the earth. All based on Augustine's distorted and twisted teachings. Now, we also covered in our patristic studies that uh, Augustine, in, in, it's documented that he studied before his conversion with the Stoic philosophers of Greece, uh, write the writings of those, and also with Manichaeism, the early uh, Babylonian uh, Gnostic teachings. And these, these um, we can say that these influenced his doctrinal interpretations of Scripture later on in his life. And this is how not only do we see Rome involved in false doctrine, but we also see Babylon, because Manny taught in Babylon Gnostic or mystic Christianity, and Augustine was also influenced by Manny's writings and Manny's teachings. And so there's the Babylonian influence, because Manny taught in ancient Babylon, or in Babylon, and um, uh, I should say more modern Babylon, um, after the 
the, Jesus Christ had already died and, and resurrected to heaven. Maddie's teachings come on the scene in between, you know, 2000 current era and four, four hundred, or excuse me, 200 A.D. And, and 400 A.D. And we know that Athanasius, he, um, he came against such heretical teachings when he, when he argued against Arius. Arius also taking on uh, some of those influences and, and starting to teach that Jesus was a created being. Um, uh, which is heresy also, which some modern Christian sects still hold to those teachings, such as Jehovah's Witnesses uh, of the Watchtower, who believe that Jesus was a created being. Those are, those are the fruits of Arius' uh, heresy. So, getting a little bit off topic here, I'm just trying to show the influence of what replacement theology has caused, brothers and sisters. Now, Augustine's teaching gradually increased... Uh, until it possessed other factions of Christianity. And it even infected the political structure of his time. And this is why the Roman Catholic Church mingled with politics and became what is called a religio-political system. The Roman Catholic Church is, quite frankly, a religio-political system. It's the very one that the Antichrist is going to use, brothers and sisters, according to Scripture, to set up his one world government. So, I know that a lot of this is, is new to a lot of Christians, but I want you to look into this and research it for yourself. It's very important that we understand where, what we call now, modern replacement theology, where it came from, and the dangers of post-millennial views, and the dangers of all millennial views of the church. Number one, they're not biblical. Number two, they give, the, the idea is given that the church has the authority to usher in the, this period, this thousand year reign of, of, of peace, and it is the church that has the authority to call the shots in politics and make things work properly down here. So it's, a, it's creating a group of modern zealots, and it's creating a group of religio-political systems that are, quite frankly, extremely dangerous. And we see this when the, one more point, we see this when we see the Protestant churches uh, marching uh, proudly into the ecumenical movement under the umbrella of the Roman papacy to, to set up and control the politics of this world using Christianity. Very dangerous, brothers and sisters. Don't be deceived by that. That is an antichrist spirit, and we need to stay as far away from that as we possibly can. Until next time, I hope that you continue to listen to our studies. We're going to continue to talk in our Discourse Kingdom messages um, in part five coming up. So stay tuned, brothers and sisters, and continue to study here at Nugget of Truth. Thank you.